So in this chapter, Rhoda's going to be exploring what's probably the most common objection to the fine-tuning arg argument, which is you can explain the fine-tuning of the universe not by appeal to God or an intelligent designer, but by appeal to a multiverse. Now, how does this go? Well, the, the general idea is if there is a multiverse, so suppose, um, so first thing to note is by a, a universe, they're not meaning what philosophers typically call a possible world. A possible world is a total way all of reality could be. So they use the word, wor the word world, not for Earth or a planet. They're using the word world for um, a total way reality could be, which might include many universes. So don't think of a world as a planet. Uh, think of a possible world as just a total way things could be. And then that one possible world could have many universes or a few universes or just one universe, like which is our normal way of thinking about it. Um, now, suppose there is a multiverse. Suppose that there's a um, large number of uh, universes, and physicists have postulated this, okay? Um, then it'll turn out that in the life-permitting ones, uh, the people in the life-permitting universes, if they're, if they're as intelligent enough to be people, uh, they could be like, wow, look how, look at this universe. Look how it looks like it's fine-tuned, just, just so that life could exist. Um, uh, not realizing that they're just um, in a universe among many and they're among the ones that were going to have life. The many other universes that couldn't support life, well, they're just there, dead, you know, lifeless. But nobody's going to be saying that. And in the vast majority of universes, uh, there is no life. But in the few that where there are, um, there's going to be you know, intelligent beings wondering, oh, wow, look, isn't this cool? Um, so this has been kind of this has been kind of the main hypothesis to accept um, out, apart from theism, and it's normally been. And when I was in graduate school, this is how I thought about it: either theism or a multiverse, and those are kind of the main competitors. Uh, now I I think we should just pause and reflect on that. Okay, the fine tuning of the universe is pushing philosophers and physicists in either one or two directions, either toward theism or either toward multiverse. And I think, again, I just want to, I want us to pause and, and think about how interesting that is. Um, uh, that, that's the way people are going. That, um, that again, even if the, this doesn't point to God, which would be really interesting, it's going to point to a multiverse where there are many other universes like ours. And that's really interesting, too. And I want to say, because when I talk with undergrad students, they kind of just throw out, oh, multiverse, there's other universes like ours. It's a fun theory, blah, blah, blah. Um, but the people pushing this aren't pushing this just as some possible theory. Uh, they're trying to say, oh, this is the most probable explanation. So uh, uh, not just that, oh, it's, it's some mere possibility. I mean, there's, uh, possibilities are easy. You know, um, anything could uh, be epistemically possible. Okay, so, uh, uh, so yeah, the, uh, this data is pointing us to something about the foundations of the universe that are very interesting. So that's the uh, multiverse theory. Um, and uh, next, we're going to be looking into how Rhoda responds to it.